Hi everybody, welcome back to NARC Shield. My name is Jennifer, if you haven't been here before. If you have, welcome back. Tonight, I wanted to do a video and I wanted to try to support someone who had been commenting to me and I'm hoping that in supporting and supporting this person that it may also support you or someone that you know who may be going through emotional abuse, which is narcissistic abuse. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will please like, share, and subscribe. So let's get right into it. I uh, have been in narcissistic relationships before and we can ha be in so many different types of narcissistic relationships as I've said many times on this channel and you've probably heard from many other people's channels or um, documentaries or whatever if you've read up on it. It can be with anybody. It doesn't have to just be a romantic relationship. Many times I hear about the romantic relationships. And so um, I, I do understand what it feels like in each type of uh, dynamic, whether it be with a family member or a, um, somebody that you work with or a friend. Um, but when it comes to the romantic stuff, uh, it seems to really... I just hear a lot more from those type of people who are hurting. And so I do appreciate getting messages from everybody, but the ones, I, I mean, it just breaks my heart when someone is going right, when they're right in the thick of it. And it's more that romantic type relationship. I do understand that pain. I understand the pain in other ways as well. Um, but the romantic ones, oh, it's just so hard. And so I wanted to talk to this person because um, obviously this person, you know who you are. Um, obviously you guys broke up, you know, quite some time ago. I think it was eight months ago. I won't go through here and read what you wrote out loud or anything. But um, you're still in a lot of pain and I mentioned the trauma bond and how it's so hard to get through the trauma bond. And part of go, getting out of a narcissistic relationship and getting through that trauma bond is going no contact. And many people don't understand just how hard it is to go through no contact. If you have watched all my videos, then you know that I have talked about this before and talked about the trauma bond but it boils right down to a lot of that. Also, there's different types of narcissist and um, other things can coexist within that. Um, so if they're narcissist, they could be uh, also, um, you know, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist, but I guess you could be like borderline personality disorder. I don't know if you can be borderline personality disordered and narcissist, because I think borderline personality disorder does have some narcissism in it. But, you know, um, different, uh, you can be different things. You could, it could be that you have other things going on, like anxiety, personality disorder, you know, whatever it is in the DSM. And they can coexist. And so everybody's different. The thing about narcissism is, is that when you recognize and you uh, are more aware and you recognize the traits, you do see it um, a little more clearly and you can spot a narcissist a lot quicker than you probably could before. Everybody has narcissistic traits and we all do some of the things that we talk about. However, we're looking for patterns of behavior. And that's with um, throughout all your all the relationships that a narcissistic person would be with. And so it, it also could be that, um, you know, we who get into narcissistic relationships, once we start healing and we're able to do some of the work on ourselves and start looking at ourselves and understanding our personality, we can understand a lot more as well. Sometimes it's somebody who does have borderline personality disorder. Sometimes it's just someone who's just codependent. 
but at sometimes it's someone who also has very high narcissistic traits or is a narcissist. There's so many different dynamics and because I can't see everybody's dynamic and I am not a therapist, that's hard for me to really get in deep with each specific um, relationship with people. I do highly recommend therapy. I Therapy is one of the best things that I have ever done to help me cope and deal with um, my own emotions when I'm going through triggers and things like that. There's so many things that could be happening. So with this particular person, I highly recommend going and getting some therapy and seeing if you have what is called CPTSD. And um, I talk about this, Dr. Romney is somebody, I told you that I would give suggestions of different places that you could go. You may have already gone here, but I highly recommend Dr. Romney because she is a doctor and she knows a lot about narcissistic personality disorder and pretty much all of the other ones as well. And she can break things down for you in a way that you'll understand it, but she's also a clinician. And so hopefully you'll be able to find a lot of help there. And um, there's another guy too, I always forget what his name is. I'm, mm, I'm in the next video, I'm gonna have to mention the other guy too, but there's another therapist that I highly recommend as well, and I just can't think of his name right now, and I apologize. Maybe I'll put it in the link, but I will definitely do it in the next video. Um, let me make a note of that um, other doctor. But um, you want to you want to get some therapy, even if it's online therapy. So um, just reading books and knowing about narcissistic personality disorder, or even learning about codependency and yourself, is very very helpful. But there's a lot more that you may learn about yourself and the dynamic of um, that relationship because they will be able to um, delve deeper into that. A trauma bond is when you have been given um, positive reinforcement and then that, and then you get negative reinforcement, positive, negative, positive, negative, and it's a constant thing and you're being trained. And so that you get bonded to the chaos and that person. So you get used to the chaos and you see it as normal. And once you, your body gets dysregulated and a narc, a true narcissist is banking on, a, in a sociopath, they're banking on you getting dysregulated because that's how they bind you to them, no matter who you are. And so you will tend to have cognitive dissonance and make excuses for your narcissist that you are in the relationship with. And um, this particular person wanted me to discuss the co cognitive dissonance a little bit more. And so it's basically, it's too hard for you to imagine. And I see this in what you're writing to me and I want you to know that my heart goes out to you because I've so been exactly where you are right now and it just breaks my heart um, to read what you're writing because I, I, I almost feel like I'm, I'm feeling it again, like I can feel it. Um, it's just so painful, and so I'm so sorry that you're going through so much pain. But it is hard when you start to have some awareness about what your relationship really was, and if you were really in a true narcissistic abusive relationship, and then you realize they never really loved you and they just saw you as an object, and they are you, people that use you, and they pretend, and they wear a mask, and they, they um, mirror back to you what it is that you need and want because they learn and they listen to you, and they can see what it is that you need. So they exploit those things and then will sit gaslight you and call you needy and uh, for the things that they knew and and then they're exploiting and they're making you act that way like needy so right now you're missing this narcissist and it's because you miss that chaos you miss getting that positive reinforcement and of course we don't really want the negative but it 
you're not getting that positive reinforcement right now. And that's what would make you feel better. So you have all, whenever you get the positive reinforcement back, even when, if you were just fighting and texting back and forth, if you heard from this person even, and I'm sure th they felt the same way, it's, it's like, oh, you know, I, I heard from them. At least I heard from them and they're not ghosting me. And you, and maybe they say something nice to you like, well, I really miss you too. And, and, and then, so you have like this dump of dopamine into your body and you're feeling better. And then all of a sudden they're gone again, or they say something really mean to you. And then they don't say, then you can't get a hold of them anymore or you see them on social media and they're with someone else, or you talk to someone and they're telling you, oh yeah, I saw Johnny Joe with Susie Joe and they are happier than I've ever seen them before. You know, it's best that the two of you, you two probably just weren't made for each other or something like that. That can make you feel horrible. You've got all that horrible cortisol now being dumped into your body and you are being triggered from things from your childhood. And what's happening is you are starting to feel like there's something wrong with you and you want to be validated. And the person that you're wanting to be validated from is that narcissist. And if you're not getting that validation from them, you are just going farther and farther and farther down and beating yourself up and replaying things in your head and ruminating and basically hurting yourself because you're trying to figure out something that's never going to truly make complete sense because it doesn't, even though you have awareness and that part, you, you can reason and go, okay, well, okay, I guess that makes sense, but for sure not, that wasn't fake. Because you would never do that to somebody. You would never, for long periods of time, fake loving someone. You wouldn't pretend you know, to be this really good person, but on the, but really not be a good person and then rip the rug out from up underneath somebody. You just wouldn't do that. And so to sit there and go, what was real? So cognitive dissonance can come into play and you'll go, no way. He looked me in the eyes and he, I could see, he cried, he, he did this for me, he did that for me, I could feel it from him, he's been in pain too. You will come up, or she, you will come up with all kinds of reasons because you don't want to face the pain. And so you need to find some other reason for it to make sense and so sometimes you start to blame yourself. Well, if I wouldn't have been so hard on him, I was always griping and bitching. I mean, he did say I was a bitch all the time. And if I wouldn't have been nagging that maybe things would have worked out, you'll start to believe things. If I would have just had sex with them more, you know, I've really been tired. I've been coming in. I was working all the time and, you know, I just wasn't giving them the attention. If I would have just been having sex with them more, they wouldn't have gone and cheated on me. You, you, you start looking for reasons and you start giving them uh, the out that they exploit. They know that you're going to do that. They know you're a good person. They know you're forgiving. That's why part of, that's what, part of the traits that they loved about you and why they came to you. You, know, you wanna know why do they move on so quickly? How can they move on so quickly? Yeah, I get it. It's because they're not sitting back and ruminating like you. And one, they were never invested in the first place in the way that you were. They, they're, it's not that, they're just different. They see things differently and their needs are differently and they, they different and they go after their needs in a different way. So it's like, um, there's so many different ways to describe it, but basically HG Tutor s says appliance. You're basically an appliance. And when you figure things out and you start not working properly for the narcissist, it has nothing to do really whether you're having, well, it might a little bit, but really it's, not about whether you're having sex with them or whether you griped with them. They, they love attention. It doesn't matter what kind of attention that you're giving them, good or bad. 
But when you start to see who they really are and you start to call them out on that, that is something that a narcissist cannot deal with because they don't want to look at themselves like that. They don't take accountability. They're not responsible for things. They need that to be your fault or somebody else's fault and they will always blame. And when that happens, they go away and they find new supply which they've probably had in play um, all along, but now they're going more towards it and spending more time with that. So you think that they moved on quickly, but really these other people um, have been in play. So like if, if you saw um, this person with another woman, I don't know if, I, I don't know um, the, the relationship. So I'm just gonna say woman and man. So. You were dating a man and this man went, I think, I think it was, but anyway, he went on and all of a sudden he's with somebody else and you, and, and he's, he seems happy. It, this, he was probably already talking to that source of supply and maybe future faking, maybe even cheating behind your back. And a, a lot of people will go, oh no, no, there's no way. There's different ways to cheat. Um, it doesn't always have to be sexual. It can be an emotional relationship where they're calling and talking to them and you don't know about it. And it's in times when maybe you're in the shower or, and it's usually when the golden period is over and there's some fights happening and you've already ripped the mask off and you've questioned them about a few things. And so they need to go and heal that narcissistic injury. So there's narcissistic injuries that happen with a narcissist. So you go into the shower, you're in devaluation, he's mad at you, y'all had this fight where you used to not fight, everything was super grand and dandy. Now you're in devaluation, he said whatever. You go to take your shower, he needs to heal from that narcissistic injury. So he calls Susie Joe up on the phone or texts and says, hey babe, you know, I was just thinking about you. I sure am missing you. Susie Joe's like, oh my gosh, has been taken off the shelf. Like it's about time. I thought, I never thought I'd never hear from this guy again. And they're, so they're fast, you know, texting. That narcissist is like, wow, okay, Susie Joe is still sitting around waiting on me. So you know what? She's making me feel good. So they start putting Susie Joe into that idealization phase, golden period, love bombing phase to some degree and getting narcissistic supply there. They could be doing that with a bunch of people and they're going to see who is going to give them the best supply. And because you have already um, seen the real them, seen faults in them because they need to be, you know, admired and perfect all the time in your eyes. And that's how they, uh, they're grandiose in that way. They, they, they see themselves in that way. So when you see fault in them, they need to turn that and, and put it on to you because they can't accept that fault. And so, so you are, you don't realize it. You think that you've done done something wrong. All you've done is seen that somebody has not is not treating you right. And so you're trying to create boundaries and you're trying to talk you may even not even be trying to fight with them. You may just be saying asking a question. You may not understand that you are giving this person a narcissistic injury. You, you know, it and that is something um, it, it appears that like um, this particular person that I'm talking to um, knows a little bit about the narcissism. And so you would know about the narcissistic injury. One of the people that I do recommend people reading, um, I do love Dr. Romney's channel. I think she is fantastic. And I highly, highly recommend people going to her channel. Um, I listened to, I listen to her all of the time and I highly recommend her books as well. But I also recommend HD Tutor's um, channel. And a lot of people, they either love him or hate him and agree or don't. But, or Sam Vadkin. But I feel like I, 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 I like both channels for different reasons. But HD Tutor, he just puts it out there. HD Tutor and Sam Vadkin, they are narcissists. I'm sorry for the noise in the background. It's my new puppy. And so I'm sorry. Um, chewing on something here. Let me go. Here, here's a little treat treat. So, um, sorry about that. They are narcissists, and so they can tell you about themselves better than 
many people can, um, especially if they've been in therapy and have been studying about themselves and they are self-aware in that way. And these two, in my opinion, are self-aware um, in that way. And so they can explain so many different things to you that, you know, are harder for me to explain. And so a she tutor is going to spell it out to you what a narcissistic injury is. He will spell it out to you about um, the type of um, appliance that you are for uh, which is supply for the narcissist and why they need you and what they do. And because they are a narcissist and the same with Sam Batkin. So you could go to both places if you haven't already, see which one you resonate better with and connect better with to get some of that information. And that's what I did when I was first going through, I didn't understand and I was just Googling certain things. And this just kept coming up every time I would Google a feeling or something that was happening. Um, narcissism just kept coming up. And then I started thinking back into my past and in different therapy sessions. And that word kept coming up, but I never really thought about it the way that I do today because I didn't understand it the way I do today. Um, and so you, understanding the different terms and HG Tutor talks about those terms on his channel. He ha does have a channel right here on um, YouTube, and that's Knowing the Narcissist. And Dr. Romney, she has a channel, and she went through the whole glossary. Um, here on my channel, I've also got videos where I talk about the different manipulative tactics and the different, um, the different things that they do. But what better way to get it than from the mouth of a narcissist or someone who works with narcissists on a regular basis? I'm here to support you and tell you that I am so sorry that you are still hurting and you could have CPTSD. And I would like to think that maybe you could look that up and um, check into that a little bit. Maybe go and if you're not in therapy or if you are, maybe talk about that a little bit in therapy. I do feel like you are still in that trauma bond and it takes a long time. It's not something that happens overnight and a lot of people who have never been in narcissistic relationships understand that and so they try to push you and say, want you to just get over it and so you start to shame yourself and you're like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get over this? It's, I'm telling you, it takes a long time and you're, there's, you're okay. It's just going to take some time. You're in that emotional sea, which HG Tutor talks about on his channel and it's hard. You're, you're just swimming and you're swimming and you think you've gotten 10 steps ahead and then you're not back. And a lot of that has to do with no contact and also being addicted to the cycles of abuse. You could be getting triggered. And so learning what true no contact means, that does not mean just not talking to them anymore. That means not looking at their social media. That means not hanging out and going places where they might show up. That means not talking to their friends. I just spent, <laughs> that means not talking to their friends or their family. You have to, for your own good, to heal yourself, pull way back because they could be triggering you and not meaning to. There can be a trigger there and it take you back 18 steps where you have moved forward 20 steps. And, um, so, you know, that's, that's what I mean. And then you start to miss them and you question why you would miss somebody who would abuse you, but they weren't all bad, right? There were some great times. And so then you start to question yourself and you start to make excuses for the narcissist again. And then you might reach out. And then if they don't uh, respond in the way that you want, um, that could knock you back 50 steps. And so even if you were the one who broke off the relationship, whether they broke it off or you broke it off, it is a very difficult type of relationship to get over because you are trauma bonded to someone. You have been basically mind manipulated. And the longer you were in the relationship, the longer it takes to get over it. 
And I don't mean that to make you feel worse because that can be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, am I ever going to get over it? Sure you can, you're going to get better. But learning about the trauma bond, learning about CPTSD, learning about cognitive dissonance, learning about, did I say no contact? learning what you really need to do and being aware and also learning about codependency and your own personality. It's really important if you can to get some therapy. I highly, highly recommend it. And if you can't go in, there's plenty of places um, online where you can get some therapy um, online. I did, I did online and I actually did do in office and I still check in. So, um, you know, what happens is many times when you are hurting and you find out that you may have been in a narcissistic relationship or they may have been a narcissist or sociopath, um, you're only focusing on the narcissist and you stop focusing on yourself which basically is a narcissistic relationship when you're, we, we do tend to forget about ourselves and do more for other people. And then we end up feeling depleted and resentful and all the bad traits start coming out later in us. But there could be some depression that is going on right now and you may need to um, talk to your doctor about that as well and getting some rest. It is hard to rest when you are ruminating and trying to figure it out. Listen, the other supply isn't better than you. They're not better than you. They're just supply. They're just the next appliance. And I promise you the same cycle of abuse if you were truly with a narcissist will happen with that person and the next person and the next person and the next person. If they are um, in a relationship long enough, they will start to see the same signs of abuse. It does not matter what they look like. They could tell you that they weren't attracted to this certain type of person and the next thing you know, that's the type of person that they're with and you're like, what the heck, I don't understand. It doesn't have anything to do with whether the two of you are the same. What's gonna be the same about the two of you is that you are givers. <laughs> and that you make excuses and that you don't have um, strong boundaries. And even if you make them, you let people cross them. But you could be completely different in looks and in different things that you like doing. And yes, the narcissist all of a sudden seems like they know that they're doing everything that that person likes. They're mirroring back to whoever it is in front of them. It doesn't matter whether it's the lover or not. It could be the person that they work with, the best friend. They will mirror everything back that they know that person needs and wants to make them feel special and to bond them, to bind them to them. It's very, very confusing, I do know. My heart goes out to you. I hope this helps. I just want you to know the best thing that I can do for you is to just let you know that you are not alone even though you feel like you are alone. And I hope that you'll be able to get some rest and do some things that will help you because um, focusing on just the narcissist is just sending you down this rabbit hole of ignoring the needs of yourself and you need to take care of yourself. You deserve it. Until next time, thanks and I'll see you soon. Bye.